Welcome to this video on the problem purpose statement and questions, which is part of our series on conceptualizing research. The one technique that can really help researchers find the golden thread of their research is Sharon Merriam's PPS and Q, Problem Purpose Statement and Questions. Although she developed this tool for qualitative researchers, it's flexible and can be easily adapted to other types of research. The PPS and Q is a one-page document that includes a problem statement, a purpose statement and research questions. Although there are many ways to write problem statements and different disciplines and fields have their own way of writing it, this one is written in a specific way with certain components. The PPS and Q is both a thinking and a writing tool, so it can help you think through your research and it can help you write when you come to writing it up. And it can help you to keep the research focused throughout the thesis. It's always a work in progress because as things change throughout the research journey, you might need to revise and rework the problem purpose statement. Why one page? Well, the problem purpose statement contain, contains only the essentials, the core elements, so that you can focus on exactly what you'll be examining in your research project. Now, many people struggle to fit what they want to say into the one page. And if this is the case with you, then rework it until it is only one page long. Because what you're doing is you're making decisions about what will become in the foreground of your study and what will move into the background. So you're working through this process of making decisions about what's essential and what's important, but it won't be in the foreground of this research. So let's look at the problem statement. The problem statement succinctly states the key problem the research will focus on in one or two sentences. And this is the constructed articulation of the problem the research will address and other problems will fall into the background. A research is always conceptualized around a problem, otherwise there would be no need to do the research. Identifying the problem provides the rationale for doing this research. And the more it is articulated as a problem, the more your audience will be convinced of the need for this research. So really what you're doing here is you're answering the so what question that your audience might have. So why do we need to be interested in this research? In research that is not well conceptualized, it's often because it's still at the broad topic level and hasn't been focused around a specific problem. So a topic example would be, I want to do research on mature students who return to studying after many years away from educational institutions. So there could be many problems related to this topic, financial, family, access and studying problems, and you would need to select one. So I've selected a studying problem. Mature students find it difficult to return to studying after a number of years away from educational environments. The problem statement also includes a sentence or two about the knowledge gap. And the knowledge gap is about referring to previous research, situating the study within it and giving a reason why the study adds to current research in this area. Does it agree with previous research? Does it dispute previous research, attempt to re replicate an earlier study, disprove one, or introduce a new concept? So my example here would be, Although much research is being conducted on access to higher education institutions for mature students and on their performance, 
Little is known about the studying practices of these students when they return to learning. So you can see there's a broad brushstroke of the literature being identified there, access to higher education and institutions. And of course you would provide sources there. The problem statement includes a sentence or two that provides the context for the study. The context refers to the place, the time, the institution, the environment, whatever it is, the thing that is taking place. So without a context, the study is vague and ungrounded. So an example here would be, more mature students are returning to higher education institutions in Canada than ever before. Statistics from Unistat show that before 2014, 15% of students were above the age of 30 and so on. So what you can see from this example is that it's about mature students at university in Canada. So you can see, you can assess the context from that. The problem statement includes a sentence or two about the conceptual framework. I'm using conceptual framework here as a catch-all phrase for theory, theorist, model, system of concepts, perspective, etc. Whatever informs the research, the, the broader lens through which this research is viewed. So not all studies will have a conceptual framework. But an example would be, Febris and Segal argue that mature students often do not have the social capital rest necessary for successful completion of studies, which is why they enter educational institutions as mature students. The study intends to explore if, dif if the difficulties mat mature students experience in learning can be explained by a lack of social capital. So social capital is the conceptual framework in this example. The problem statement needs evidence to support the, cla the claims being made about the problem, the knowledge gap, the conceptual framework and the overall need for this research, and evidence usually takes the form of published sources. The problem statement also needs to contain a logic, and that logic really is dependent on each research project. And the logic means that each point builds on another point and it makes overall sense. Because each project has their own logic, the order of the problem statement will change. So if it's a theoretically important study, then perhaps you would begin with a conceptual framework. If the context is what's most important or relevant, then you might begin with the context. So the logic depends on your study. The purpose statement follows the problem statement. And this is the statement that frames and guides the research. And included in the purpose statement is the sentence, the purpose of this research is to, and I would strongly encourage you to have that sentence in your, in your thesis or your paper. The sentence closes the knowledge gap identified earlier in the problem statement and establishes the broad goals of the research to expose, to explore, to investigate, to experiment, etc. So that implies the methodology. So if you say to assess, then you're implying a methodology that has a before and an end point, a start point and an end point with some mechanism for measuring in between. So the example here is the purpose of this research was to explore the difficulties mature students experience when returning to educational studies after a gap period. The study intends to research how mature students in the Faculty of Education study and how these study habits relate to social capital. You could add a sentence or two that explains the methodology in more detail. After the purpose statement, you'll find the research questions and the research questions are the broad guiding questions not interview or survey questions. And they unpack the research problem. So almost like slices of an apple pie, the questions make up the pie that is the problem. It's very easy to have a plum pie, pie slice slip in as one of the questions. And when this happens, the researcher often has to do research for both pies.
The questions also give the reader some idea of the scope of the project. They indica indicate the size of the project and the area it will cover. And questions often correspond to chapters in a thesis or sections in a paper, so they can provide an organizing framework. And questions must be framed as questions. So think carefully about your questions. Try not to ask questions that have a yes, no answer. They must be transparent and not ambiguous and difficult to understand. They must be specific and have only one question in a question. They must be answerable. You know, you don't have to come up with answers, but you must be able to address them in some way. And they must be, and you must be able to collect data on them. They must be questions that are doable. So examples would be what difficulties do mature students, mature returning students experience? What study habits do mature returning students have? How do these study habits and difficulties relate to social capital? Now there's a logic to these questions and they unpack the problem in a systematic way. One could ask a conceptual question that could be addressed in the literature review. For example, what does returning student mean? A plum pie question in this example would be do mature students experience difficulties because of in institutional inefficiencies? Now this is an important question and really relevant and in the end it may be a conclusion to the study. But it wasn't the intention of this study to focus on institutional inefficiency. That's a totally different project. So here's another example of a problem purpose statement as a whole. Many doctoral students writing dissertations experience anxiety particularly when receiving feedback on dissertations. That's the context. There is huge emotional investment in writing feedback, and for some students their whole sense of self is at stake. Yet feedback, particularly from supervisors, is an essential part of formative assessment for graduate students in their writing and in shaping their identity as scholars. Feedback is often fundamental to learning and to producing appropriate writing. It is also frequently problematic and there is the research problem. So there's a build up just in a few sentences and then it leads to the research problem. Writing is emotional and despite a growing field of research that attests to this, emotions are often not explicitly recognized as part of the doctoral student writing journey. Little is known about the impact of these emotions on writing after receiving feedback and there's the knowledge gap, it's situated within a literature. Set within the framework of ethic of care that focuses attention on interpersonal relationships and relational ontology, and there's the conceptual framework. The purpose of this research was to explore the emotions doctoral students experience when they receive feedback on their dissertation writing, and there's the purpose statement. Through in-depth interviews, Yep, that's the purpose statement. Through in-depth interviews with 13 doctoral students, this project aimed to investigate what emotions doctoral students experienced when receiving feedback, how these emotions were perceived by doctoral students, and the impact of these emotions on their writing. And I just want to point out the importance of making sure that your questions are framed as questions. You'll see that question number three is not framed as a question. So these are your research questions that unpack the research problem. So let's have a look at the key points of this video. So we looked at Miriam's problem purpose statement and questions and, and how she articulates the problem statement, which should include a couple of sentences on the context, the research problem, the knowledge gap, the conceptual framework, there should be evidence for all these claims and there should be a particular logic that is relevant to your study. You would also include a purpose statement which closes the knowledge gap and states the broad goals of the research. And this would be followed by questions which unpack the research problem and provides the scope of the project. So if you have 10 questions you know that's a big project. Have a look at Miriam's book 
if you want to read up further on her problem purpose statement and questions. Thank you for watching this video on the PPS&Q which is part of our series on conceptualizing research.